More than two dozen states are currently seeing alarming increases in new coronavirus cases. The average number of new coronavirus cases across the U.S. currently stands at about 50,000 infections every day. Across the Midwest, North Dakota, Wisconsin, and parts of Missouri have all been hit hard by new COVID-19 infections and deaths over the past two weeks. So Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter uh, joins us now to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, you are an internal medicine physician at California Pacific Medical Center, and it's really, really sort of disturbing to see uh, some of these color-coded maps um, where you can see that, you know, states that, that really didn't have much of a spike in COVID cases cases are spiking and other states that have gotten that had Pennsylvania being one of them gotten a handle on the virus are seeing little slight upticks uh, in the virus uh, infections and we kind of want to see things going in the opposite direction. So with colder months ahead and flu season set to uh, kick into high gear, could we see a massive spike in coronavirus cases? Well, and Marie, you know, as you pointed out, the daily average of new COVID-19 cases is now at a 23% increase from the average just two weeks ago. So 21 states have reached their highest seven-day averages for new cases since the pandemic began. Uh, we're, we're now eight months into, into COVID here, and nowhere in this country is COVID-19 truly contained. So I think as we head into these cooler months, which is also flu season, uh, this is really problematic. You know, more people will be spending uh, time indoors where COVID-19, as we know, spreads much more easily. And then another big concern is around the holidays, given that, that small gatherings uh, are really what's driving the current increase in cases. Uh, I think you know, families and friends are, are thinking of coming together for the holidays. People should think really hard about it first. You, you may very well be risking your parents, uh, your grandparents, or your own life by doing this, unfortunately. We know that spending time indoors eating, drinking, and talking are really the highest risk circumstances for spreading COVID-19. So Dr. Ungerleiter, as you know, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation projects projects rather we could see the COVID-19 death rate hit 2,900 per day by December. You know, I, I went back and looked at some of the reporting in the early months of the pandemic, Dr. Ungerleiter, uh, and back in July of this year, Reports were that we would hit 200,000 dead in this country by Election Day. Well, we have passed that, and we are well on our way to thousands more before people head to the polls, although many people are already voting. Um, the, it, the trajectory seems to be going up. We are aware. I, th I guess the point of my question is we are aware, we were aware of this back in July, that if we did not implement certain measures, if we did not do the things that were required or suggested by the CDC and the NIH and Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx and Dr. Redfield, that we would be at 200,000 back in July. And so I think about all the families as we get closer to Thanksgiving uh, who have lost their loved ones, who will not be able to enjoy the meal. Forget the fact that people who have not been infected with coronavirus will have to socially distance and not see their families for Thanksgiving. But think about those folks who have lost them forever. No matter when this virus and this pandemic goes away, they will never be able to sit across the table with a loved one because of this. And we knew this back in July and the president knew about it back in February. So is there, are you concerned that this second wave will even be harsher than the first? Well, Vlad, you know, I'm absolutely concerned. Uh, we, we have lost so many lives unnecessarily because of a lack of leadership, a lack of plan uh, from the White House, from this current administration. And those of us in the medical community are incredibly concerned as we, as we head into flu season uh, that cases will continue to trend up again. We do not have this virus under control in this country. And, and for America to be in this situation um, is, is really unacceptable. Uh, doctor, on the topic of masks, uh, the president last night at his uh, town hall meeting, he was challenged on his position um, when it came to wearing face masks, particularly after contracting COVID-19 himself. This was his answer. 
I'm good with masks. I'm okay with masks. I tell people wear masks. But just the other day, they came out with a statement that 85 percent of the people that wear masks catch it. Well, so you know, they this didn't is say that. I know that study. Well, that's, 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 that's what I heard, and that's what I saw. And regardless, but everybody's tested, and they're tested often. And I also knew that, hey, I'm president. I have to see people. I can't be in a basement. I can't be in a room. I can't be. I have to be out. You can see and people with a mask, know, though, right? I can, but people with masks are catching it all the time. All right. Let us clarify, because Savannah Guthrie tried to get in there and uh, tell the president that he was wrong on that study, that she had seen the study, um, and he sort of kept on talking. So please, can we talk about the study that the president was referring to and what the actual conclusion was? And Marie, the president is not correct. I believe that he was referring to a CDC report from September 10th uh, that found that actually dining out raise the risk of infection uh, more than other social activities. Uh, the study actually asked people who had tested positive for COVID-19 whether they had worn a mask in the last two weeks. Uh, the takeaway was not that these people had worn masks and still tested positive. Uh, those who tested positive were twice as likely to have self-reported dining at a restaurant, where, as, as we all know, it's nearly impossible to wear a mask. So President Trump's uh, misrepresentation of data and, and spinning of these numbers for his political gain is, again, putting the health of the American public at risk. Masks absolutely work to stop the spread of COVID-19, and everyone should be wearing them. Uh, uh, doctor, what else does the study show about community and close contact exposure and how they contribute to the spread of COVID-19, again, as we look forward to the holiday season? Well, again, you know, this looked back at people who had symptoms uh, of COVID-19 and then asked people to self-report, meaning they had to remember back to what they'd been doing uh, the two weeks prior. And it found that indoor activities, social activities where people were not distanced, not wearing masks, um, had increased numbers of those uh, testing positive for the virus. So as we think ahead to the holiday season, we know that spending time in poorly ventilated areas eating, drinking, talking loudly, singing, hugging, um, all put us at risk for increased spread of COVID-19. And again, as we're thinking about the holiday season, it's something that, that we all need to be considering. Um, you know, one of the challenges about this virus is that it was new, novel, right? And so as the pandemic has been unfolding, we have been learning more and more about the virus, how it works, and the best way to treat it. Um, and I want to talk to you about remdesivir. This is one of President Trump's favorites as well for a while, though we don't hear much about it now from him. Um, there, the WHO uh, spoke about a new study about a focus on remdesivir, basically saying that it does not have a substantial Substantial effect on a patient's chances of surviving the coronavirus. So, what questions remain about remdesivir? Is it still, you know, something that has value, even though for some patients it might not help them survive? What can you tell us? Uh, these are all great questions, Anne Marie. You know, this WHO study uh, of remdesivir appeared, as you said, to have little or no effect on 28 day mortality or length of hospital stays. So this was in, in people who required hospitalization. Uh, you know, I, I think high level, these results are really disappointing given that remdesivir ha has shown promise as being a drug that has some effect uh, against COVID-19. Um, this, this is still early information that needs to be looked at closely. Uh, and this is why rigorous study of, of treatments and, and following scientific protocols are so important. Um, we have to rely on the data. We have to look at it carefully and not allow political or economic pressure to decide whether a drug is, is effective, whether it's safe. Um, it's yet to be seen how remdesivir is gonna be used in, in the coming months, but this is very important information for us all to have. Dr. Shoshana Ungerleiter, always great to have you to provide clarity, specifically, Dr. Ungerleiter, around the president's misinformation regarding masks and their effectiveness. Uh, we really, really appreciate it, as always. Thank you for having me.